Hey guys, so, well, I'm continuing this video of the 6.4 power stroke, and I did a really bonehead move, and got in a hurry and left the GoPro camera laying on the kitchen counter at home, so we are going to improvise, and the show must go on. The video quality probably won't be as good coming off the Samsung G8 phone, but hopefully you guys will get something out of this. Hopefully you won't be too pissed at me. I have got to figure out what I did with all the other parts as I left last night. These are head bolts that came with the Ford OEM head gaskets that we're not going to use, but we'll give back to the customer. I've already done one cylinder head. Let's carry these over there. And what I like to do, I've got the head cleaned up. I've got the uh, block cleaned up on this side. So what I like to do, let's set this up here. Take a couple studs. Use those as guide studs. There some instructions and these are the hard washers for the small bolts. I like to take a couple of these, take the fine threaded in, make sure your holes are clean, blow them out. If you have to take a thread tracer, normally on these six fours and six oh, I don't really see rust problems on these like on some of the older engines. But uh Take the fine threaded in, and these will go in hand tight. Dumbass, you're not the fine threaded in, the coarse threaded in. Take the coarse threaded in, thread it into the block, all the way down till it bottoms out. And you can do this by, you know, just by hand. Go down here on the other end. All right, so let me get the camera set up. I gotta go get the cylinder. Well, let's walk out here. I washed it off real good in the rocker box and the valve cover. Real good. I've already cleaned up the surface, but I might look it over real close again. We'll see how she's doing there. Yeah, I'll throw it on the bench there and just kind of eyeball it a little closer. You know, pull your gold plugs and your injectors out. When I was younger, I used to try to cheat and do it. And then you take the die grinder and you're cleaning it up. And then you whack the tip of the injector. So there goes a $500 injector you got to replace. Just pull them out. Save yourself a lot of trouble. I'm going to go throw it on the bench. Make sure it's cleaned up and I'll show throwing it off. Okay, on these surfaces, I don't clean up real good around in here. Because there's nothing sealing here. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. I mean, if your valve... Or carving up really bad you can pull your valves up and try to clean your valve seats up a little bit but this one's not carboned up there's nothing really wrong with that so I mean your fire ring is going to be sealing up right here there's really no need if these aren't carboned up there's really no need to to mess around cleaning up in here because you're not really gaining anything um, and you'll notice that you'll have spots like this here that don't worry about that too much. I mean, w what can happen, guys, I think they get a little nervous and they get way too aggressive and they'll get like those 3M pads, you know, the abrasive ones, and they'll take too much and create imperfections in the cylinder head and they cause themselves more problems than anything. So, I grab, you know, these uh, Rolo, what do they call them, Rolo Lock? Nah, I don't know what the hell they even call them. The little bristle pads. Uh, you guys have seen me use them before. The green ones are the kind of the ones I use for cylinder heads. They're not very aggressive. I mean, and you can. You can tip them a little bit, but not too much, you know. Kind of tip the edge in to kind of clean up some of those spots. And the, the thing is, they don't really take a lot of material off and... It takes a while, you know, but they, they, I've had such good luck with them. They don't tear the heads up, and they don't tear the block or deck surfaces up, too. And if you're, like, working on a what I call a real diesel engine with liners, um, if the liners are still in it and you're doing a head, it doesn't, if you kind of nick the edge of the liner, you know, where it's protruding the cubs of the cylinder block, it doesn't really hurt it that, you know, it doesn't hurt it the, 
The other style, you know, the pads, I can't, I think they called those roller lock pads. But yeah, they would, they would take divots out of stuff. I mean, if you hit the edge of an injector, it'd tear the shit out of it on the tip there. So, all right, guys, um, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves because uh, I told my wife that uh, she says, now you better keep wearing those so your hands get better. And so I'm going to do as the missus says. So I put on a pair of my sissy gloves and I'll be back with you. Hey guys, so anyways, um, take a couple studs there and stick them in a cylinder block. Make sure you thread those in there where they bought them out. And then, uh, you know, use them as kind of guide studs and put your cylinder head, watch your fingers. <laughs> uh, but uh, put them in until this, you know, the head goes down so it sounds nice and flush. Um, and then put all your studs in and do the same thing. Just make sure they're bottomed out and make sure they're, they're you know, I, I generally on these, on these newer engines, these 6.4s and 6.0s and even the old 7.3s. But, you know, if you work on multiple diesel engines, like I, I you know, I used to work on a lot of older Cummins, 290 Cummins, 220 Cummins, uh, 300 Cummins, 444s, all those big cam motors, all those, basically all those 855 blocks, even the N14s, and they were all the same. Those three-piece heads, if they had 800,000, a million miles on them and you had to in-frame them, you'd pull your head bolts out and you would have to take thread chasers and clean your cylinder block threads out because, you know, you don't want to put, a, for one thing is when you put that head bolt back in there and that hole's all rusty, not only do you take the chance of screwing up the threads on a brand new head bolt, but you're also taking the chance of not getting a true torque on that cylinder head. So make sure your threads are clean in your block. Like on this one, I didn't have to chase one thread. They were all pretty clean. I had a couple that, you know, I couldn't seem like I really couldn't get, get them down in there as bottomed out by hand like I wanted to. The other side, the driver's side, went together actually a little better than the passenger side on the studs as far as threading them in. But, I mean, I took an Allen wrench. There's an Allen head in the top of those ARP studs that you can thread those in with. I mean, you shouldn't have to reef on them, and I didn't on these. I barely had to turn them with the Allen once I stuck them in there, and they, they went right in. And another real, a real important thing for... For, for guys that are new to this type of stuff, or if you're going to do this on your own, when you pull those cylinder heads off, you're going to have water and oil run in those holes. Make sure that when you're cleaning that cylinder block up, you make sure you get you a rag, you know, kind of cup that rag around your blower nozzle so it doesn't blow back in your face and blow all those holes out. Get all that oil and water out because water isn't as bad as oil as far as if you decide that you want to thread that stud in there and you want to center down especially on a head bolt especially on these you know you're doing them by hand you're threading them in by hand because the arp instructions say thread in by hand only okay so but on some of the other head bolts on other engines, you're you're putting them in with a wrench or whatever. And, you know, a lot of Cummins motors and cap motors, we've always taken those head bolts and we've just run them down, run them down with an impact. Well, the danger of doing that and oil in the bottom of the hole, you're basically kind of, you kind of got like a hydraulic cylinder there. And you're pushing that, just think of that end of that bolt as the hydraulic piston and that fluid's on the bottom and you're trying to compress all that fluid in there, well, it'll crack the block. I mean, you can ruin a cylinder block doing that. If you decide to, if you don't have enough common sense to stop, uh, you can really screw things up. So just a real, real, be real cautious with, you know, get all that fluid out of those holes. So anyways, once you get all your studs threaded in till they bottom out, then you're, you're ready for torquing. Uh, on the other hand, I wanted to mention um, uh, what was going on with the 6.7 Power Stroke. Uh, I put it on my Facebook page, some pictures of it. Um, <laughs> that thing was a disaster, guys. Uh, I, we were going to pull the fuel tank. He got a fast fuel system. We were going to, you know, the fast fuel system has a better filtration system on it. And um, anyways... <laughs> 
we're going to put that on there and on the six sevens you have to drop the fuel tank to put the fast on i'm thinking about doing a video on putting the fast fuel pump in the six seven but anyway um i got back to the fuel tank and noticed that the fuel tank had slimy fuel all over it and, and uh so i i got the tank dropped down partially you know i got the got the uh, skid plate that protects the tank i got it loose and then dropped it down just far enough to, you know i got the straps loose on the tank and uh, dropped it down just far enough to where you know you, what you usually do is pop your hoses off and your sending unit uh, plug in for the sending unit and get your you know you got to get your fuel neck and your vent hose off so I, I got it found down just far enough and i shine my flashlight up there and i said well that makes sense that's where all the wet fuel is and the dirt and greasy shit all over the fuel tank his lock ring that holds his sending unit in the tank wasn't even it was still on top of the tank on top of the it really can't come off because it has to come over the hoses and tubes and all the shit to come off but it it had come loose and you guys know how those those uh um, sending units have those springs that are kind of spring loaded it was something there popped up out of the tank and so the tank the tank was just full of dirt so we know exactly why the cp4 fuel pump failed and and now i'm really understanding because i pulled that filter underneath the cab out and i noticed there was kind of a bunch of muddy looking dirty shit in it and i thought man his fuel system's dirtier than hell is he dumping dumping dirt in the fuel tank and i really didn't pay much attention didn't look behind me you know at the fuel tank and didn't notice all the slimy shit all over it at first so but uh anyways i completely cleaned that tank out i washed and washed and cleaned and wiped it out by hand you can wipe most of it out by hand the back side of it's pretty tough but i kept washing it out and then leaning it forward and rinsing the stuff forward where i could reach it and soft it up and wiped it out and i really got it clean and uh, that's that's what uh that's what happened on that so i what i don't understand is with that much fuel all over it, you know that when you had to fill up or when you parked somewhere, there had to be fuel running on the ground when the tank was fuel or when it was lost. And you think that you think that they would have seen the fuel dripping on the ground, but I don't know. Some guys don't pay attention to stuff like that. I'm a little bit meticulous on my, especially on my truck that makes my living for me. If that some bitch has got a drip, I'm wanting to know where it's coming from. You know, I'll park somewhere and back up and see. Oh, there's a wet spot. What the hell's that? You know, especially in the summertime when you get all, when it's hot and you got your air conditioner on and you forget about the, the, the condensation up on your, uh, you know, your condenser or your uh, accumulator dripping on the ground and you back up and you go, what the hell is that leak? And you think you got an antifreeze leak. But that, uh, that is uh, hopefully, uh, I'll, I think I'll do a video on the fast fuel system and, uh, hopefully that son of a gun will be gone tomorrow i'm kind of itching to get that thing gone it's been kind of a nightmare it's one of those projects it's just just doesn't seem to want to go away okay guys well right now we've got the uh all the studs in and i've got the nuts on take some of that arp assembly lube and coat the coat that those are kind of shouldered nuts they're 12 point uh, 21 millimeter socket and get you and if you can't get like an impact you know they're just i broke so many sockets torquing heads and it hurts like hell especially if you're doing like a truck and you're standing on the tire of like a w900 kenworth which is quite a ways up there you you, you can take a pretty good trip uh, my my son's got a pretty good scar in his back because i told him we were uh, in framing in CM871, and I had went over the entire torque spec procedure with him. And I said, here. And I had all the head bolts numbered for him with the paint marker, and I told him the whole sequence. And he's a pretty sharp kid, and I knew he'd figure it out. But I told him, I said, if the socket slips off or you don't have it on there good, you need to figure out how to brace yourself and catch yourself in case you eat shit. <laughs> and he wasn't listening to me on that part of it he was focused and i know what he was doing he's he was really nervous about screwing up the sequence or something so he was paying attention as to where he was at you know and he wasn't really paying attention as to what happens if shit goes wrong here <laughs> well all of a sudden i hear a big crash i'm on the other side of the shop and i said hey you all right and i hear him hollering over there and 
anyways, he had that socket broke on him, and uh, he had that step right there on the saddle tank. You know, the step to climb up the truck. It hit him right on the corner of his, right in the square center of his back, and he was bleeding all over the place. And and uh, I was gonna haul him to the doctor, but he. He said, no, I think he was trying to impress his dad. He didn't want to look like a weenie. <laughs> he, he wasn't having none of that going to the doctor. So we just went and bandaged him, doctored him up. But anyways, be careful when you're when you're pulling real hard, especially if you're standing up on something. The guy can really, I've well, if I ever, if you ever catch myself on camera, uh, you'll see that I've got one tooth that's kind of missing there in the front. And I was torquing a cylinder head one time, and I don't, I don't remember. I was standing in the wrong place. I was on the ground. That's what it was. It was on a, it was on a 290 Cummins, and I was standing on the ground, pulling on the torque wrench, and the socket broke on me. No, the extension broke. I had a short extension, three inch, three quarter inch drive extension, and the extension broke on me, and that end of that ratchet hit me right in the freaking mouth, man, and broke my tooth. Oh, I was fucking mad. Anyway, so that being said, just be careful. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you guys, I've got some, I should have some fairly good videos coming up here pretty soon. Um, I got a Case 580 Super L, kind of a old tired backo. It's really not that old of a machine, but this guy bought it at an auction a couple years ago. And I've had a couple videos, I think, where I've worked on this thing before. It needs a lot of work. Uh, but now the power shift transmission is smoked in it, and we're going to be rebuilding the power shift transmission and we're going to be fixing a lots of hoses and plumbings on the boom and the, the I think the thumb the thumb cylinder constantly leaks off on it so that's that'll be an upcoming video which will be a fairly good video and the other video that it's probably going to take uh, I don't know uh, I got a dresser TD 25g and I've done videos on that on that dozer too before, but this time we're putting brand new pads, grouser, you know, the well pad grouser combination there, uh, pads, uh, pads and uh, tracks on it basically, and we're putting new segments on the on the uh, sprockets there. So um, it's going to take a little bit to do that video because um, I got them coming out of AMS can undercarriage parts and. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, he said three days, and that was from today, which mm, probably looking at Wednesday or Thursday before they even get this shit. They've got they've got the pads and the track chain in Indiana at one place, and wherever the track bolts are, they're three days away from Indiana. So I'm thinking to myself, why don't you have the track bolts? at the same place that you have the pads and the track chain. Wouldn't that make a little more sense? So anyway, um, that'll be in uh, probably, you're looking at Thursday, or they, they probably won't, they're going to assemble the track pad to the track chain. Um, and if you're wondering, don't worry, I'm going to go over the torque sequence here before we get done with you. Um, but uh, they were going to knock off like, 800 bucks if they just sent them directly to us and we could assemble them and I said I told the owner I said I can't assemble the pads to the track chain for 800 bucks by myself It's gonna cost you more than that because it's gonna be more time I said I don't know if they got multiple people working on it or if they got a machine that screws them on there I don't know I said but you're not gaining anything financially by having me doing it you're losing so I said you're better off to let them assemble them and then we just flop the things on the ground and when we bust the alligators loose we drive them off one set and drive them onto the new set and flop them on there and bolt them together so anyways that'll be a future video but i don't expect to do that one for probably at least a week and a half at the minimum i'm thinking two weeks by the time the parts get here we can start doing it but anyways on this uh torque sequence okay start out in the middle you know there's what 10 head bolts, I think. One, yeah, there's 10, I think. Studs, I should say. And you start out in the middle, work your way out from both sides, you know. So you go in the middle, go to the left, go past the middle one to the right, and, uh, you know, keep doing the same thing till you get to the ends. And start out at 90 foot pounds in the, in the middle there, do them all at 90 foot pounds. 
And then the second sequence on these ARP headsets is 180 foot-pounds. And then the third sequence, which is, I, I use my three-quarter inch drive torque wrench on the third sequence. And then the third sequence, you want to go to 275 foot-pounds. Um, I'm using a snap-on uh, a digital torque wrench here that does torque angle and... Uh, this torque wrench uh, was given to me by one of my YouTube viewers. Uh, I had a YouTube viewer in, uh, I think his, God, I'm trying to remember what part of Texas he was in. Um, he's, he's in, I should know this because I'm originally from Texas. But anyway, um, I had already done a, a little bit of work over the, I did a little bit of computer reprogramming for his John Deere anyways. We'll, we'll just say that. And um, I'd already done a little business with him. And he had messaged me or emailed me and said that with the code on his tractor. And the code looked pretty really familiar. And he just wanted a, a little help trying to, you know, figure out what the hell the problem was. So I looked up the code and... And I knew exactly what it was. I knew the, you know, the thermal wax valve, the co the cold start IVT valve was stuck open. So basically, I just, I, I think I sent him a link there to, because I got a video on that somewhere. I think, it, but but it was on a 6170R, and I just sent him the uh, video link on that. And no shit, guys. I was like, I don't know, it must have been like a week later. My wife calls me, goes. There's a there's a snap-on torque wrench in the mail. I said from who? And she says Matt Bigum. I said, are you shitting me? Really? I said I didn't do that much for him, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. But I thanked Matt, and Matt was a good guy. And he, Matt says, well, hell, they would have charged me way more than that if Deer would have came out to fix the damn tractor, which he's probably be right. You know, if it would have been a around here they would have said oh hell we can't fix that here we got to haul it to our shop and then next thing you know you've got a brand new ivt transmission and a twenty five thousand dollar bill and all you needed to do was change a two hundred dollar cold start valve but anyway that being said thank you very much matt i really appreciate it i've really got me some good viewers um I'm sorry sometimes that i get so wound up and so busy i really feel bad about it too I should take a lesson from Jay Pater. I watch his videos when I get time, and I should do. I, I'd like to do something like that. I'd like to keep track of things when my viewers give me things, be, stuff like that. I and and thank them because sometimes I forget, and I'm really sorry for that. Sometimes I get so damn busy that I'm basically working from sun up to sun down, and and then you know I do this video editing, and then I don't get done till. Shoot, you know, right now it's 8.46 p.m. And I'm sitting here editing a video. So anyway, I, I really appreciate it. If I don't, if I did forget to thank somebody out there, I sincerely apologize for it. And just don't take it personally. I just get really, really busy and I forget. So anyways, I'll uh, quit the commentary here. and You guys can listen to the, listen to the voice in action. Torque the small bolts here, start in the middle. This one, this one, this one, you know, 25 foot pounds. Then we'll start putting all the rockers and all that garbage back on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this with you on these six fours. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get the cam lobes and whether the valves are closed, they don't want cam lift and you're sucking a valve down or, or sucking the rockers down there and bending a valve stem. That's what they're worried about. They're wanting the cam lobes to be flat on the flat lobe of the cam. That way before you torque them down. They're torqued down to 45 foot-pounds. So what you want to do is go around. There's a there's a dowel pin on the crankshaft there. Put it at the 1030 position. I know I'm on number one because that's where I wound up the last time. And the way you tell that is so this is number... One three five seven two four six eight. Driver side is two four six eight. Um, odds on the right, evens on the left, um, which is odd. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, what you want to do is when you have that valve cover off over there, rotate the thing till you see cam lift on either number three or number eight on the intake valve, and once you see 
These are real easy to figure out. There's I for intake, E for exhaust. So when you're rotating around and you see that thing starting to come up, look at your dowel pin on your crank and get it pretty close to the 1030 position. And it was really easy to do with the head off on this side because I had the piston at the top and I had valve lift on number three and I knew it was at number one top dead center. So anyways, that's where I wound up on the other side. So once you do that, um, you can torque uh, number one, I'm trying to remember, one, two, seven, and eight. So you can do this one on number three on this side, on number three, on number one top dead center, don't get confused, number one top, on number one top dead center with valve lift here on number three intake, you can do number one and number seven. And then we'll rotate it 360 degrees and we'll do these two, number three and number five. Don't get confused, because I do as myself. I'm a dumb bastard, and sometimes I have to read things over and over again to say, oh, I get it now. Okay. Torque these down, number one and number seven. I'm supposed to torque the inboard one first. I forgot to do that. I think we'll be fine. And we get an 18 millimeter in a ratchet. We'll rotate it around 360 and we'll do these other two. Really close right there. And you can see that these got quite a bit of play in them now, and I had them kind of bolted down to where they were had a little tension on them. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is make sure your holes are cleaned out where your injectors go really good. Uh, put your injectors in, cinch them down to where they're not tight, leave like maybe one or two threads loose on it. You know, go down and then back it out just a little bit. And then we'll put the rocker box on, torque the rocker box down. And then you put your fuel rail on but first we're going to blow that fuel rail out and clean it out and make sure it's clean before we stick it on there let's clean some of the that ARP assembly lube off the seat and surface for the gasket there okay guys so this is where okay so got the injectors in Got the hold downs, cinch them down, back them off a couple turns. Hold downs are loose. Put all those in there. Put your fuel rail on. It's it's loose too. Bolts are loose. 
Put your fuel tubes on, going from there to your injectors. Snug them by finger. Okay, once you snug those by finger, it's supposed to be 1.5 foot pounds, which would be 18 foot pounds, or 18 inch pounds, which ain't much. That's why I just finger tighten them. Next step is, after you do that, final torque the rail on it, which will be 114 inch pounds. Got the camera mounted back where it's supposed to be here. Anyways, before my camera kicked out on me, um, where was I at? Yeah, final torque the the rail bolts. The rail bolts are torqued to 114 inch pounds. Some guy was watching the sun video. He was on. He was saying, "Well, you guys can." You guys can find the torque specs. That's up to you. Oh, okay, what a dickhead. Um, okay, so then the next thing is, I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to be torquing the fuel tube nuts too with that, but not the same spec. Then you go to put your T45 Torx on there. And then go to 28 foot-pounds on the final torque the injectors. So 28 foot-pounds. Okay, now took a crow's foot, 17 millimeter, start on the injector side, that'll go to 106 inch pounds. Okay, and then do the the uh, rail side. Okay, then we're going to go 60 degrees on those. You can make a mark, or if you've got a torque angle torque wrench like the snap on one, you can use it. So I'm just going to put a reducer on this same setup that I've got here. Take the uh, torx bit off, put this on. Take the torque wrench, lay it on here on the intake manifold and switch it over to torque angle. Okay, and it's set at 90, so we gotta go to 60. 60 is one flat. And then, same thing, start on the fuel injector side first.
Seems excessive to me. Well, that's that's probably about right. I'm gonna mark one just to check what I'm doing. I'm gonna mark one with a paint marker and see where I wind up with this torque wrench. Okay. So let's let's mark right here in the center of this flat is right there. And the center of this flat will be one complete flat moved over. And let's go with torque angle again and see where this winds up. I would say it's pretty well dead on the money. This torque wrench is pretty damn accurate. <laughs> so I guess I need to quit worrying so much. I'm up against the injector there, so we got to be careful. Motherfucker, you. Get on there, you miserable prick. Did I lose my deal? I did. I gotta start over. Okay. Damn thing popped off on me. I lost where I was at. Go back to 106 inch pounds. with the other torque wrench. These, these six fours are such a pain in the ass to work on. They really are. I guess I shouldn't have backed this one off. Leave that son of a bitch on there in case it happens again, I guess. Okay. No real pressure sensor is kind of right in the way. Sixty on that one. Okay, those are all torqued. And guys, I lied to you. I don't know why I was thinking. I got 
my head all screwed up there. The the rocker box is 114 inch pounds. The rail mounting bolts are 100 and or not 100. They're 23 foot pounds. So I just wanted to clear that up. I'm just going to stick my glow plugs in now. Sense them up, and then you can put your valve cover. Put your valve cover back on. And the next thing we're going to do is change the high pressure fuel pump on it. That's pretty much it for that, guys. Um, so, yeah, kind of a crazy little sequence there on this uh, fuel tubes and stuff. So, we'll go over it again just for one more time, just for so everybody has it. So, stick your injectors in. Tighten them up. I just tighten them up till they bottomed out, and then I backed them out a couple turns where the foot down, hold downs were loose. Put them all in. Put my rail on, mount it to my rocker, or actually they mount to the, the bolts are actually sticking up the pedestal there, and this one supply line for the rail comes through the rocker. Anyways, put that on. Put your tubes on. And snug them to snug them by hand. You're supposed to go one and a half foot pounds on each one, but I just snug them by hand. And then the next step after that is to final torque the rails to 23 foot pounds, and then final torque the injector hold downs to 28 foot pounds, and then take these on start on the what I saw the outboard side, the injector side, and then and torque it to 106, then 106 on the rail side. So 106 here and 106 here and so on and so forth to get to the end. And then you want to go, you can do it with a mark, like I showed you that one there to do, or you can just take a torque angle wrench and do them all 60 degrees. And then you got them. So that is all there is for that.